Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bulletin Podcast. I'm Moose Lundstrom. I'm Jerry Cage. What's up, Jerry Cage? What's happening, buddy? Well, you know what? You had the day off. That's why you're all chipper. Oh, I know. And I got to go golfing today with my son. Yeah? Man, it was a great day. Did you win? Uh, it's not about that's winning a no. or that's, losing. That's a no. That's a no. <laughs> it's about enjoying the day with your child. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm actually excited today because there's a guy we have on today. Uh, you've seen once on the podcast for a short bit, but uh, this is one of the better storytellers I I know. I, I know That's because, what I've heard. Yeah, well, we see, well, you don't, you're not there in the morning when he shows up and, and starts telling you things well, every I'm, day, I, all day? I have it. Yeah. I have it. Oh, really? But you tell me all the time, yeah. even though we both work closely with him. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I, so. I guess he just doesn't like you, Jerry. Maybe that's what it is. Boom. Maybe, maybe that, or maybe it's because Rob's in the room. That's what it is. That's right. <laughs> Randy Weimer, what's going on, boss? Not much, buddy. No? Finally came back to work. Finally came back to work after yeah. four months. Yeah, the U.S. So. Marshals gave up on you. They quit looking yeah. for you. So, <laughs> no more witness protection. No, no witness protection. <laughs> <laughs> so, Randy, what's what's happening with you nowadays, man? Same old stuff. I don't know why I came back to work to tell you the truth, but I did because I'm a freaking idiot. Premier madness. <laughs> That's, what it is. That's what it is. You ever watch a movie Supernatural? I yeah. Uh, old uh, old uh, the uncle. Uh, Bobby Singer always says idiots, idiots. I always think of this guy who always says idiots, <laughs> idiots, <laughs> it <was> idiots. <laughs> but hey, uh, before we go any further, if you're new to the podcast, hey, welcome to the Bull Hucker Podcast. What we do on here is we have a guest who's going to tell three stories about their life. Now, here's the kicker only two of these stories are true. One's either borrowed, made up, or it's an embellished story. At the end of the podcast, Jerry Cage and I, the Cager, is going to try and figure out which one of these is not true. Now, we got our asses kicked last week. Way kicked. I so mean, so kicked. You took one, I took the other, and we both. It is insanely one hard yes. to do well, that. You guys are losers. We are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> and this and is idiots. why we haven't had. This one. is what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. We drew straws to see who had to deal with Randy. So oh. I got to be here. Yeah. Oh, I'll see you tonight, Jerry. <laughs> Start drinking early. <laughs> and I did. Mm. I did. That a boy. <laughs> well, Randy, you ready to tell some stories, brother? You bet. Let's do this, man. You want to read them off, Randy? I don't Randy want to call you, Randy. Me. Jerry. You want Randy? To, you know, yeah. I'll get it. The Rocking Chair in Fort Morgan. I'm so impressed so far. Ooh. He's kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thompson Springs, Utah, gas station. The Driscoll Hotel, Austin, Texas. I've heard that. Just, I've heard that before, but anyway, not that story. But oh. I've heard of that hotel. But oh, okay. Anyway, yeah. Well, pick one out, brother. Well, I think. Well, talking to Randy earlier, it sounds like they're all going to be ghost stories, yes. which would be perfect for this this uh, it, it, Halloween this episode. Here coming up in a couple yeah, days. So yeah, for sure. Um, I think I'm going to try the gas station, Thompson Springs, Utah. Utah. All right. Okay. Well, years ago when I worked for Tri-State Commodities, and we hauled a lot of salt out of Moab, Utah, and I loaded a load of salt one night down at Moab and came back up in Thompson Springs is right on the right off of 191 takes you to Moab, Utah okay. and in 70. So then 70 would take back into, you know, Grand Junction come over into come out to come home. Right. Well, anyways, there's a little gas station there and there's a couple of like fifth wheels and the trailer house that sits back in the back and Thompson Springs actually sets back away from the highway. Okay. But there's like meth heads there and weirdos, you know, and yeah. it's just like a little gas station's got two pumps. Well, I usually stop there on my way back, fill my thermos up, get a bottle of water and some you know, whatever. Crack. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Cheap radios, TVs, whatever they stole that a little, week. A little upper for the <laughs> ride. Try, try and score some amphetamines. You know? yeah. so, <laughs> so anyways, I walk into the gas station, and I'm going to go fill my thermos up full of coffee, you know, and there's none in there. And the guy says, you know what? He goes, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll make some, you know, whatever. So I'm kind of looking around and just kind of... Look down an aisle over there, and I look up, and there's a guy standing there, like a Charles Manson, you know, kind of weirdo-looking 
dude, you know. Like all hippied out or yeah, I mean, just that weird, weird just, stare. Just, just that weird stare, you okay. know. Scrubby. And I kind of glanced over at him and I didn't think nothing over it. And I looked over again and, a, I mean, a shock went through me. And I thought I couldn't hold on to my thermos and, and I was just, I got to get out of here. This guy's just, I don't, whatever reason, just completely creeped me out. So nothing hit you. It was just like the hair on the back of your neck yeah, kind of thing. Just kind of like a weird you know, gut I'm, feeling. I'll, I'll, I'll go to, I'll go to, uh, Fruta and stop at the truck stop down there and fill my thermos up, you know. In Colorado, baby. That's <laughs> <laughs> how, how old are you about this around this time, Randy? I had to be in probably I'm in my forties, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. So Somewhere 40, 40 45 years yeah. ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to give that joke to someone who says Jerry, he gets all sad. <laughs> but anyways, I n- never thought too much of it, you know. So I I go back, go to Greeley and I unload and I reload. And I go out to uh, to Ogden, Utah, and uh, I unload out there. And then there's a salt mine too in Ogden that we'd load at all the time, you know. Well, I went out there and they got an office in there, and I'm in there, and they got a TV up on the wall. And the secretary, you have a load number and everything, you know. We're filling sure. everything out, get my paperwork, you know. And I just happened to look up, and they're talking about the triple murder. At Thompson Springs, Utah, you know, no. like a few days later, and they show the guy that they caught. Oh shit! <laughs> out there. And it's and it's that dude. Are you and serious? I, and I just went, oh my god! Wow! You know, you go, could this be real? And I'm going, I know that uh, that was that guy, and uh, he killed a he killed the uh, guy Clerk. working in there and a, a couple from. Grand Rapids, Michigan, of all places, just happened to be on their way, going somewhere, stopped in there, and and, kill, and killed all three of them. Okay, so hold on. Was the attendant there when you were there? The, the, the worker? Was he yeah. there? Okay, so he hadn't died yet. Yeah, he had, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought it was be like yeah. one of those Tarantino movies where mm-hmm. you're walking in, and you look behind the counter, and the guy's there bleeding, and yeah. he's just killed him, and now the serial killer's <laughs> bringing yeah, up this, your Pepsi. This yeah. is like three day, two days, three days later, you know, when I'm yeah. back over at Ogden. You know, a whole... Pl- different part of utah right but it just happened to be on the news yeah at that in that in their so office did it have a, a date and time was it the same day it was you know i really didn't catch that i just seen where they mm-hmm. had you know triple homicide and then they showed the the suspect that they caught and it's it was a guy holy cow it was the weirdo you <laughs> had a bad feeling about was he convicted i'm sure he was you oh, know he didn't follow, I never it. follow up I, you know and sometimes you go then after, you know, after a while, you kind of forget about stuff like that, and you go, well, you know, was that really, you know, and I'm going, some things you just, you can't get out of your head, you right. know, I, the image right. of that guy, I can still <clears throat> kind of, still kind of see, so. Kind of like Rob Thunderhide. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, you just go. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be work to kill somebody, see, Rob's safe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, uh, the crazy part about it is, uh, on this podcast, your episode 183, 183 and i've heard so many stories like this like i I gotta ask you know how close you are to being dead you know what i mean how lucky you are to be alive makes you wonder yeah you know what i mean i mean that guy might have been the randy killer just Uh. saucing guys named randy you know what i mean but you (laughs) you introduce yourself (laughs) but he's like just happened to cover his cover his freaking name tag yeah yeah Yeah, it was laundry day so he was like man this does not feel right yeah (laughs) and then he walks out right (laughs) that reminds me of a conversation you and i had a couple days ago about we were talking about the greatest villains in movie history and I can't remember the, uh, no no country for old man yeah Adrian oh, Bardeen yeah. what was his name in that oh my god but you anyway mm-hmm. same thing right same I mean thing. it was a creepy yeah. like that like yeah that's a, it hit me just like that like mm-hmm. when he's gonna flip that coin that old man that works the convenience store yeah. and he's like yeah heads or tails <laughs> oh yeah heads or tails was, and then the guy's man. like what yeah it's yeah. been a while since I've seen that but that was for a weird movie, yeah, that was a that damn did, good movie. He was an evil dude. Yeah. He was yeah, evil. Yeah, he was way. intense too, exactly. man. Like you wouldn't screw with that dude. I mean, yeah. it was didn't know the size or whatever. Just that vibe, you know what I mean? Yeah. And how many people do you think are walking out there like that? How many people are in our country? Oh, yeah. That are just like thousands. You think of, thousands of yeah. serial killers? Yeah. Yeah, they say. I think I see. Well, let something. me let me ask you this, Jerry, before you go on. You, are you seeing thousands that have committed the ser- uh, committed murder, or thousands that are capable of it? What are you talking about? As in that have done it. Okay. And they they're saying that I I can't remember where I heard it, but supposedly we we walk by them 
like oh, on daily. a regular basis. Oh, yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. That that's kind of creepy. Yeah. So I'd like yeah. to have that spidey sense that <laughs> Randy's got. <laughs> be like walking by somebody and be like, mm, serial killer. You know what? <laughs> you know what? How about this? What if that's the bullhucker? And it's a borrowed story, and Randy's, in fact, a serial killer. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to put this mic up his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he brought two people to help him dig the hole because the one's a big one, man. Right. <laughs> yeah. we'll be digging and for she knows how to drive fast. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Your sister's a getaway driver. <laughs> <laughs> she said she was booking 90 getting here today. I was like, uh, <laughs> that Mercedes will move, That's she right. said. Isn't that what she said? Yeah. 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 Well, makes sense. You're driving 90 makes here, sense. I said. Yeah. We believe you. don't got to prove you're Randy's sister. It's fine. You're <laughs> breaking the law. So well, what did you think about that one? Man? I liked it. Yeah, me too. I liked it. That was pretty. That would be very, very eerie to yes. have that that feeling. And, uh, man. Oh, uh, you're, okay. Julie found it. Let's see. Some say average person walks past 36 murderers in his or her lifetime. If you ask Google, this is the figure that pops up first. Uh, positive. Yeah. So that's uh, whew, since 1981 or so. I've heard a dozen police officers say the similar thing. So that's 36 people. That's still yeah. That's still crazy, crazy to you. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. That's wild, man. So the number could be way higher. Yeah. Well, that, the, the since 1981, they've heard police say that. Yeah. But yeah, some say on average. I bet that's on an right. average of what? It says some say the average person walks past thirty six murders in his or her lifetime. In a uh, lifetime. Yeah. But still, Jerry, that's still That's unbelievable. Yeah. Isn't it? I mean that's a little over yeah. I'm forty nine, so I mean that's Damn. One point three a year, whatever it's still that's you know, yeah. that's that's yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Out of how many millions of people? So, you know, there's me three saying million, there's three hundred and fifty million people in America. Yeah. So there's a lot of serial killers out there. Just crazies, man. Just crazies. Uh, I I, there's another podcast I like to listen to. And when I work nights, I listen to it a lot called Monsters Among Us. And uh, it's a podcast where people call in and tell them the supernatural stories or stuff like yeah. this. And they, every now and again, they have a truckers episode. Yeah. Oh, of really? Just yeah. the stuff truckers have seen, dude. And that's that's the craziest one oh, in my yeah. book, man. Just, oh, yeah. you know, because... You've been out. Well, you work nights, and we've all worked nights. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when you're, you know, many times I was driving like on a back road, and you see something scurrying in the bushes, and you're like, "What the hell was that?" Did you ever go over that? the road? No. Uh-uh. Oh, you? yeah. When you're over the road, it's, it's even weirder when you're like in some foreign town, right? You know, and then you're pulling over in a Walmart or something, parking, and you just don't know. No. I I parked at one, one time, and I got a creepy feeling about that place, just because I don't know if there was drug deals going on in front yeah. of me but you know like cars like nosing up and then you just see people switching around and then all of a sudden Tr-tr-tr. what were you hauling um was it something hawkable it was uh no it was produce oh, okay it was produce huh. it wasn't milk right so, I mean, no no it wasn't milk. It get wasn't your milk. buckets Jesse. get your buckets <laughs> <laughs> free milk they probably didn't want to see the, the vegetables again <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was uh, Thompson, Utah gas station. I, I liked it too, Randy. I dig those kind of stories, and I, it's just crazy how many times you could be dead in this life. How many times? Oh, yeah. How many times you came this close? close you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, right. what what did those those people from Michigan? You said Grand yeah. Rapids. Grand, I just I don't know why I remember that, but they were from yeah. The two couple was from Grand Rapids, mm. like in their fifties. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just stop to take a just stop to yeah take yeah. a take a. Uh, a bathroom break and uh, get, get some in. coffee, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. And this crazy dude, yeah, yeah. that's that's nuts. But that'd I think be even more crazy if it was later, after right after you yeah. left. Yeah, you know? like you just left. Like, like you yeah. just. Yeah. yeah, it makes you wonder. Yeah. And this is all this goofy white dude might be the accomplice. <laughs> <laughs> that's Weimer. That's yeah. Weimer. I told he you, Jerry, he was, he was the dri- he driving a salt truck. <laughs> I told you he was one of the thirty-six. I told you, I did. packed him, packed him <laughs> in the salt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. L- lifting an orange truck yeah, <laughs> yes. headed to eastbound. That's right. Called us idiots and left. <laughs> All right. We got two left. We have Rocking Chair, Fort Morgan, and Driscoll Hotel, Austin, Texas. Well, I, 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 I've heard about the Driscoll, so I'm going to say that one's a last. So let's hear the Rocking Chair, Fort Morgan. Okay, the Rocking Chair in Fort Morgan. This took place at my house where I grew up. And I probably, at this time, I, my mom and my dad had passed away. And I was farming, and my mom moved to town. She she moved to town, 
and I'd been there, I don't know, for a while. But anyways, it was around harvest time, and I had a, a buddy of mine who's, uh, they have a custom combine outfit, you know. Sure. And one of his hired men was staying with me while, you know, while, while they're around was in the middle of harvest. And uh, his name was Steve Barnes. He was from Los Animas down south, yep, you know. Yep. And anyways, he stayed there for a couple of nights, and then one day he goes, you know what? He goes, I'm going to I'm gonna go out and stay with Paul. And I'm going, well, you know, man, you're welcome to stay here. Either that or we had, they, we had an old camp, uh, harvest trailer, you know, right. that he'd stay in. And he said, uh, I go, well, well, you know, kind of what's the deal? He goes, this house creeps me out. Wow. I don't know. Now, you know, it's an old house. Yeah. And we grew up, and my sister could testify, there was weird things that went on, you know. Right. Things, lights go on. You'd walk out of a... A living room, and we had a, a door that went to the upstairs, and it'd be closed, and you'd come in, and it's open, and right. and you're you know, the only one there. Yeah, and we're okay. the only one there. And he's like, my wife's cooking ain't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but never felt nothing, you know, horrible bad. We used to kind of make jokes on it, the light, you know, we yeah. go on washing machine, something, you know, would start. Yeah, just kind of bizarre things. The old, you know, creaky right. house, whatever, you know. And so he he left, and, and a couple of days later, you know. We'd been we'd been working pretty late, and I come home, and I remember back there's no microwave. Nobody had a microwave then or nothing, right. you know. So I warmed some stuff. I had to start the oven and like make a TV dinner, and it takes like an hour, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I did that, and I went to bed, and I woke up, and I heard voices, and I thought, well, maybe Steve decided to stay here, you know. Right. And so I'm kind of you know the way you're kind of half asleep and. And I, I kind of just heard, heard these voices in the, you know, up in the distance. And so I got up, and my bedroom was right off of the kitchen. And I walked through the kitchen, and I walked into the living room. We had a rocking chair right there, and it's rocking and it's moving. And I sat there for a while, and I just I went, well, maybe C was here, and he got up, and you know, yeah, yeah. so I kind of look around. And I go back in the kitchen and out to the porch, and I come back in, and the rocking chair. It's still rocking. Like it's not losing momentum. Yeah. It's it's. And then kind of a really weird thing, I just got this smell of like sweet, just sickening sweet smell in the right. in the room, you know. And the same thing is like <laughs> that cold chill goes up you. Yeah. And I sat there and I didn't know if I could move for a little bit. I felt like I was paralyzed, you know. Sure. Now, anyways, I went out, got my pickup, and I drove down the road into my field road, and sat there for a while, and I'm going. Ah, come on did am i did i dream this you know and i'm right. sleepwalking or whatever right. well anyways i wake up it sun's up i'm in my pickup and i go back into the house and i'm going there's nothing there you know no th and then you just wonder did this happen or did i dream it in the you know right or am i freaking losing it yeah <laughs> you know yeah. were you married at the time no no oh, okay. how old were you randy when this? It, in my 20s yeah okay yeah oh, okay might have been 22, maybe. Yeah, somewhere's in there. So Sorry, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't met Julie yet. Yeah. Yeah. So did anything else happen in that house or just we, does that? Well, you know, and not after that, for not for a long time. And then uh, then me and Julie moved back in there, and we really never had nothing happen. My mom and my sister had a few kind of eerie things happen, you know. But, uh, right. but we kind of always just said, well, you know, uh, it was kind of lighthearted, but that's the only time that I felt this is plum evil. This right. is something. This is bad. Yeah. Right. And it was a sweet smell, huh? Uh, yeah. Crazy, crazy, like. Like a perfume maybe or no? Well, yeah, like just real kind of almost sickening sweet. I can't really describe it. Really? Hmm. But I did, just you, always, did you ever talk to that guy and ask him? Yeah, and he oh. told me, he said, that he goes, you know what? He goes, well, I couldn't sleep, he says, because I kept hearing voices and stuff, you know. And I'm going, oh, I, I don't know, you know, so. That's yeah. that's, that's wild. I, I talk about it all the time. Around this time of year, I watch a lot of travel channels. Yeah. It's got all the paranormal stuff and all that. And there's a lot of places that are supposed to be haunted that they, they say that exactly, like, mm -hmm. Traits of the people who passed away, like uh, their old men who with cigars. You'll 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 start smelling cigar smells. Right, that's or, what I thought he was going to say. Right, like a cigar or perfume. You'll start smelling yeah. like perfume that hasn't been around for a long yeah. time, or the, that a lady that was murdered there or died there somehow. Yeah. You know, or stuff like yeah. that. You it's know? real small, yeah, strong. I so did you know any? Perfume. 
Yeah. Is there any history on the house yeah. that you know of? Well, you know, it w- we, it was actually called the Santa Royal Ranch. Remember, it was it used to be on our, our barn. It was written up there. And I think some people named Work actually owned it before my our family did, you know. Yeah. But then I don't know if there was any history of, you know, I, I've never, never murders never or into it. Yeah, right. hangings. Hanging or, yeah. I mean, back then, dude. I know. know. That's you what never, I'm saying. People I don't died know. all over the place. It's Mrs. Kinda... Work ended up disappearing, you know, and is chopped up in the silage. I don't know. Is the place still there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's run down, and it looks it looks like no it, one's living there, though. It, yeah, there is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So people still live in the house, but the, but the barn fought, fell fall down, and it's just, I can't even go look at it because the place is disgusting. It used to be a nice place. Right. It was just an old house, you know, and they make noises. You and, guys you know, don't own it anymore. No. No, mm. we sold it. Yeah. It's so. not thirty four, is it? What's that? It's not thirty four. No, is it's it? out on Road Twelve. Okay. Yeah, head out south. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sean Kelly is a good friend of mine living in the house out there. And I know you guys are related somehow. We'll get to that later because it was his grandfather. I think it's your uncle. You talked about the uh, World War II veteran. Yeah. That has a statue. Yeah. Is that, is that your uncle? Yeah. Well, well he's he's my dad's cousin. Okay. Whatever that puts out. Yeah. That was Sean's yeah. grandfather. Yeah. That's kind of cool. We'll talk about that here yeah. in a minute. It's a cool story. I'd like you to tell mm-hmm. us on the podcast. But anyway, uh, that's kind of crazy stuff. And it's the kind of stuff like – I don't know. Like, does it is it trying to warn you or not? I don't yeah. know. It's just a rocking chair. You would think that it would slam doors or I don't know. So there was a time that when my wife and I first started dating and we were at uh, Green Acres and they used to have in that south playground, they used to have two sets of like four swing sets. Right. And uh, my wife and I were, were swinging on the, on the east set and we were just talking, you know, hanging out. You know, and it's late. It's probably, I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock, you know. And we're just swinging, hanging out, summertime. Well, then all of a sudden, we hear, and we look over, and on that other set of swing sets, the one in the middle was just swinging by itself. And the other two weren't being touched. The other two were not moving. Just the middle one was swinging. And we're like, you know. Yeah. There's, there's the no wind, no yeah. breeze, you know, and yeah. we're yeah. like, and we're like, well, obviously it ought to stop here at any minute, you know. It yeah. just maybe something a cat came by or whatever, right. you know? and uh, yeah, and then so we're like sitting there for maybe a good minute or two, and we're like, that thing ain't slowing down, yeah. And you you get that, and I just got it right now, you know, because it, it I, yeah. now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> you know, like. The hair on the back of your neck kind of like yeah. stands up, and and so uh, she's like, "Can we go?" You know, and I'm like, yeah. "Yeah." So we we leave, we walk from the park or from the playground up to the sidewalk, look back, and the fucking thing was still moving. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, and we're like, "Whoa!" What year and is this, Jerry? About this? Oh shoot! This had to be pre cell phone. Oh yeah. So you this was okay. in probably eighty. 80- 88, 89. Right. You know? Because you said you're in your 20s. So, then obviously, obviously, before the internet or whatever. I mean, so stuff like that, when you see it, Randy, it's it's something new to you. It's not yeah. mainstream. Like, we, now we've all seen it online. You know, there's just yeah. so much of those videos out there. You oh, know? yeah. But back then, that's got to be kind of wild to see, man, because you just, yeah. it doesn't make sense that the math doesn't work out, right? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a weird feeling. So, yeah. And, been there done it and i'm not big on that stuff like you yeah you know what i mean my grandmother i I won't tell the whole story again but basically when they moved over here my great-grandfather passed away and they bought a they got where they rented a house in pueblo and you know stuff happened and finally there was a a breaking point but when they went back they realized that this place was like a like a a hooker house slash gambling house slash you know what i mean like it had a lot of bad history history, right so you know people died in this house a lot yeah and it was some malevolent stuff in there, you know what I mean? So, oh, and my grandmother was like super religious. Like when God take vacation, he put grandma in charge. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> punish them all, especially the fat ones. Like know? I'm going to Hawaii for a couple <laughs> yeah, weeks. Yeah, I'm tired of these humans. <laughs> but uh, but they, what they they come to find out that's what it was. So that's when you asked him, I wonder what that house was before. Right, right, right. You know, when it was, because God only knows what happened back in the day. There's no, it was lawlessness. So. Yeah. What, what do you think? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. I think that one. 
I like you because your sister kind of mentioned before you came that you guys had lived in the same haunted house yeah. or a, a, a house with some stuff in it. So. Some stuff happened, yeah. yeah. And I, I usually, you know, I usually don't go into this very often at all, but now yeah, once in a while, you know. Sure. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's wild, man. It's wild. Uh, all right. We got one left. A Driscoll Hotel, Austin, Texas. Driscoll Hotel, Austin, Texas. And I don't know how many years ago this has been, but we had some friends. Their daughter's getting married in Austin. So we're going to go down to the wedding. And so we go down on Friday, and the wedding's going to be on Saturday. So we thought, you know what, we're going to go downtown, 9th Street, you know, check out all the bars and, you know, yeah. the music scene down there in Austin and do all the tourist stuff, you know. Yeah. So we head down there, and, and uh, so we go, and, and we go early, you know, and there's, there's really not much going on. And so we talked to some people on the street, and they said, just wait. He, they go, here, you know, at, at 10 o'clock, he said, you won't be able to walk down the street. It'll be packed. Every bar will be packed. Bands are going, you know. Yeah. And anyways, we're in a music store across the street from the uh, Driscoll Motel there. And we're looking, and it was really a cool store, you know. We spent a lot of time in there. Right. Well, that time, start, things are starting to pick up, you know, a little bit. And, and anyways... Um, my wife says, uh, "You know what? I, I need to use the bathroom." So she goes, "Let's go across the street to that to the hotel." And that the guy at the in the music store says, "Yeah, you go over there." And he goes, "They got a really cool bar or whatever in there too." You yeah. know, it's a really a cool cool hotel. And so we walk in, and there's bathrooms there. And so my wife goes into the bathroom, and I'm, I I kind of there's a bench or something, you know. So I kind of sit down, and right away I kind of get I get this. I kind of get like clammy and you know and we'd been drinking I'm thinking man I, I don't know if I'm drink drink too much or whatever but kind of right. weird feeling or whatever you know and I'm sitting there and at the Driscoll Motel there's a big staircase and it staircase comes down and it goes into a landing and then two staircases come down off of it like a big mm -hmm. grand looking you know I mean this beautiful hotel yeah. you know and I'm standing there kind of looking at, around at everything you know and I happened to glance up, and I see this guy standing up there, and I kind of look up again, and I swear to God, same thing, like like a demon. And it's glaring at me, and I turn around, and I look back up, and it's gone. And I'm sitting there, same thing. I go, did I just see what I thought I'd seen, you know? Is that that dude from Thompson, Utah? Is that that <laughs> son of a bitch? <laughs> Well, <laughs> my, my wife comes out and she goes, "Well, let's go get a, let's go to the bar." And I said, "Let's get the hell out of here." She says, "What's wrong with you?" She goes, "What is wrong with you?" She said, and so she took a picture of me, you know. Right. And I said, "Just, I don't know." I said, "I, I, 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 I got to get out of here. Let's get out of here." Yeah. So we go out. Do you, you have know. the picture. <laughs> and so we we uh, you know by that time uh, I'm going. Again, you know, am I going insane or, you know, what right. the hell's going on? Well, anyways, we go to a couple of little, little bars, you know, and we end up going. Somebody tells us there's a really cool bar across the interstate that's kind of in the rough part of town, whatever, you know. So let's go down there. So we go down there and we find this bar, and it's a, it's a, just a dive, just the kind that I love, you know. Yeah, that's kind of. And uh, they've got some bands in there, and it, it's, it's really kind of cool. Well, right outside of the, of the bar there's a, a flea market thing so julie being kind of an antique you know we're going through looking at this deal over there you know and we're talking to this lady who's got all this stuff you know at the flea market and she goes you guys where are you guys from you know blah 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 and whatever you know and uh said yeah and and uh julie said something about yeah we just was over at the driscoll motel and she goes oh i used to deliver pieces she goes i won't go in there that fucking place is haunted <laughs> and I went, and Julie looked at me, and she goes, "Is that what it was?" And I'm going, "Yeah." I said, "I seen something in there." I said, "I'll I'll never step foot in that place again." Right. I said, "It was plum. I mean, evil, just like like evil." I, I got, was it in the human form or what? Yeah, was? it was uh, a dark, a big figure, like Western. You know them Western coat, well, like with the kind of the tails on it, like the like, dusters. Yeah. yeah, and like a like a boat. I don't know what you call it, you know, tie. Like but, a like a bolo tie? 
No, it's like they're, they're, they're kind of tied like a... A bow tie. Like a bow, bow tie, tie okay. kind of, you okay. know. But it's a Western-like looking, if you know what I'm talking about. I think oh, so. with the little things yeah, that the, hang down? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe okay. it's called a bow tie, yeah. No, a bow tie is... Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, he's talking about the other one. Yeah. 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 I know what you're talking about. It's a bow tie, but it's got the two little like yeah. lapels coming off of it. But like piercing knives, that was like, like, I don't know what I would say. He's like, dressed out of era, though. Is what yeah, you're dressed saying. out of era. Yeah. Okay. And just like plum. I mean, it was like it's plum evil. Whatever it was is horrible. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And where were you staying that night? You weren't staying there. No, you we just stayed, the rest at, of stayed at a motel. And one other kind of cool thing at the wedding. The wedding venue was at. I don't know if do you know who Tommy Shannon is. Uh-uh. He was a bass player for Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, uh, really? And they and they the, his house is is where they had the venue at. Oh wow! Yeah, he t- he turned it into a, a venue for you know sure. weddings and stuff like that. Yeah, wow. but I thought it was cool to be able to be you know go where Stevie Ray Vaughan actually recorded some stuff in yeah. in hmm. that house. Yeah, interesting. That's insane, man. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so just sat there staring at you like. Was anybody else around around you? Just, just for, you? No, we were kind of in the hallway when you when you walk into the hotel and you, like I say, you got the view of the you know the big grand staircase up there. Right. And it's like you're just kind of checking it out. And I look up, you know, and and then finally I look up and, and it's like, God, you were having damn. a weird feeling before yeah, that. Yeah. And it was uh, I was starting to get like sweaty, clammy. I don't know what you want to call Fidgety, it. Now. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> maybe you get the sixth sense maybe randy sees dead people <laughs> it's like hey randy <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's wild now what do you think it's about that crazy. one this guy and his freaking horror stories huh you're gonna be scared to drive home uh, i yeah i told you he's gonna come to my house and i'll just spoon him and then you know what i mean yeah yeah call his wife be like hey he passed out i'll give him the car you know Rubbing his back the whole time. It's fine, Jerry. It's fine. And Larry's spoon's more like a ladle. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is deep. You don't mess around. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. Uh, I like that, man. That was pretty good. It, it's too bad you don't have, like, pictures and all that kind of stuff. To, you know what I mean? Like, nowadays, yeah. people whip out their phone and just they do start, everything. Yeah, man. Yeah. Have you ever watched that paranormal uh, caught on video? You mm-hmm. ever watch it on the Travel Channel? There's some crazy shit it's people catch, up, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know? And a lot of times they don't catch it till they're editing. Yeah. Afterwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Where they set up, like, the GoPros and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Or they're taking just videos of whatever, then they'll see in the background something, you know? Right. There's an episode with uh, Rena. I can't remember. She's one of the uh, school in Fort Morgan, one of the big school, uh, not the uh, superintendent, but, like, the assistant. And Dency had brought her on. And I, Mom watches these, or used to on her big screen TV, you know what I mean? She, mm-hmm. Her YouTube. And she goes, did you see that orb in that episode? I go, no. So, because she sees it in big, I didn't catch it when I was editing. And Dency is talking above her. You can just see this thing kind of doing like an eight oh. in front, like it's over the theater over here. Yeah. And uh, uh, did, did you show me a picture? Is I that, think I did show you this at one point no. in time. I showed somebody at work. I'd have to I'd have to dig it up and look through it to find it again. But mm-hmm. it's it's not. And this is like December, so it's not a bug. It's not anything like that, right. you know. But that theater over there is. I'm kidding. It's, I, I didn't like being there alone at all. Like We caught those with our cameras uh, doing the family motel <clears throat> tour. Oh, yeah. And uh, they took us into one of those. It was like the, it used to be like where they had their water heaters and stuff. It sure. was like just a little dugout. I mean, just all dirt room. And uh, went in there and I had... I had my, one of my kids over there, and I was taking pictures. Well, when we were going back through the pictures, we were seeing orbs just yeah. everywhere, you know? Yeah. And it wasn't – it was kind of uh, humid. So, you know, there wasn't really any dust in there, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, floating yeah. around. And uh, so th- that was – that was kind of weird. So I have seen those orbs on. That was at the uh, Stanley. Mm-hmm. So that Josh Finley, Stanley. who does on here quite a bit, mm-hmm. he took that tour. But I guess there. How long ago was this? A while ago, Jerry? This has been a while. This has been I don't know five years ago, maybe. He said now there's like an app on your phone that does the uh, where it scans all the radio frequencies at once. You know, and that's how they usually hear stuff. And he said it's a group of people, and then a few things came through. Man, he said it'll it's worth the tour. I never I never had a chance to. Yeah, it's pretty neat. 
It's a pretty neat little place. I went to Estes. Last time I was at Estes was 2020. Yeah. I was dating Patty. We went up there. We wanted. I, I, that's what I told her I want to do is go to the Stanley, but in okay. 2020 it was oh, yeah. locked up. They, were, they weren't giving the yeah, tours. Yeah, our friend down in, they got married when they were in Texas. They're, She's a she was she likes that kind of stuff, you yeah, know. I mean, and she yeah. always says, "I want you to, you know, do." And I said, "No, I don't want to do it." I said, "You think it'd be cool to do?" And I said, "Till something happens to you." And I said, "It's not fun." <laughs> <laughs> Randy's like, "Trust me, yeah. I know." Sometimes you, like, I've had a couple you, close you, calls. You, sometimes there's things you just want to you leave alone. Don't, you don't mess with. Yeah, you invite it in. Yeah, yeah. Right? If you show interest in it, I know. I agree. I agree, Randy. Yeah. I agree. There's a lady on this on the, the show I keep talking about, but she was like real super into it, like looking up all the time on the internet and stuff. And then she said in her house things start happening, like, like, like it knows you're interested, so not wants to communicate. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. So oh, yeah, well, and you're, I think, when you focus on stuff like that, you become more aware of stuff. Yeah, also. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's you a good know point. what I mean. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's a good point. So, who's this person? That. Likes it, and you, you'd want to. Oh, Margaret Rosner. Yeah. Her name is <laughs> Margaret Rosner. Yeah. If you become possessed, I will stab you, just so you know. <laughs> I love you. I love you. But you start talking in Latin, I'm, I'm going to have to stick you. Speaking you know? in tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to clock you with some holy water, woman. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be game on. Yeah. Pull, pull Margaret, the cross. Margaret thinks she was a, what do they call it, a brothel zoner in the Wild West. Which, <laughs> On she's her, reincarnated, yeah. On her but, past but that life? That was her past life, yeah. <laughs> she's a brothel owner? She was a brothel owner. Was yeah. she a dude or was she a, in her no, present she was, life? She was a, a, a woman, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. impressive back yeah. in the day. I don't, yeah. You know, that's. Yeah, let's let's be honest. It's the you know, best, you know. You had to start at the bottom, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and work your way up. Yeah, yeah. You, know I mean? you, you had to hook up guys like me. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> the big homely fat ones. It's like, all right, let's do it. Not again. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you leave town, weirdo? Do you believe in that reincarnation stuff or no? I you know. I guess you can't discard it, but you know, maybe I don't know. I don't have really an answer for that. I guess it's possible. So. Madeline Hagen's a medium. She's been on here. And so after she came on here, her and uh, Orcutt's ex-wife, uh-huh. uh, they did that uh, holistic fair in Morgan. So mm-hmm. I went to support them, you know, because they were on the podcast. And she goes, you want a, a previous reading or past life reading or however she Something, worded it? And yeah. I go, yeah, I'll, you know. To me, I'm like, yeah, I'll give her 40 bucks. I'm supporting a friend. So she starts going off on it, you know. And I, I by the way, I was always been a grub. I've never been exceptional in my any life. Apparently, I always she was she was like you were a four three midget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You worked at a brothel owned by some chick <laughs> back in other like, days. You were you sweeping know? up the floor. <laughs> but uh, the thing that got crazy with it was, and at first I'm like, yeah, and, and I I get it. Sometimes they say the most vague things, so you'll so, relate it in your own head. Right, right. But she started getting real specific when she goes, okay. And all that stuff happened, and that's why nowadays you think this, you think this. Here's how you feel about this. This is why you do this. Yeah. And, I mean, she was throwing daggers, yeah. dude. Like, she was coming way closer than she should have. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. a little too specific with stuff. And I was like, whoa. So, I mean, that's kind of – when they do that to you, you get a little, like, back yeah. offish, you know. I uh, The Freehoff, men in April, what's up? Uh, their mom uh, used to read palms in high school, you know, and mm-hmm. she – she read palms to everybody. She'd never read anybody's lifeline, though. She passed away. It was kind of unexpected. She was sick, but not that sick. About a week before she passed away, April and Amanda were telling me she had laid off everything out of the blue of what she wanted in her funeral, what needed to happen. Like, she saw it coming, dude. Right. Like, she must have read oh, her own lifeline yeah, or something, you know. So people, she, yeah. Because it was out of the blue that she started doing yeah. this. They said, like, it was like, why, why, are, we, why are we talking about this? Like, mm-hmm. you know, you're not that bad. And then... Sure enough, man. So hmm. I don't know if you believe it or not, but uh, stuff like that makes me a believer, yeah. man. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I started driving when I was pretty young, over you know, over the road, and I would, went to places that I'd never been before. And have you ever done that? And went somewhere and went, I've been here before. Oh yeah, the days of days you you know oh, that yeah. kind of weird deal. I th- I think everybody does that, you know, to a certain extent. But oh, yeah. Deja vu. Yeah. 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 Do you, oh, yeah. do you stop for a minute when you do it? Yeah. You stop and like Whoa. try and get, you like yeah. get your, your Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then I, if I'm with somebody, I'm like, I just had deja vu. Right. Yeah. And and I make it very apparent I've been here. Yeah. yeah. I, I've, I've been here in this moment and everything seemed very familiar. But it's only, it's real quick. Fleeting. Quick, yeah. 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 Very, very, very. 
But I mean, yeah. do you ever get the feeling like it's going to be bad? Like, okay, this didn't turn out well. Like, do you know what I mean? I never really got that. No, you know, I, I didn't get that either. Feel like yeah, it was just kind of like, whoa, that's that was weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah I kind of get excited about it. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of like, Ooh, oh, yeah, I've been here before. This feels familiar. Yeah. This, but I'm an optimist, you know. I I'm really optimistic about just about everything. Yeah. So huh. I don't let shit really get to me. So. So do you believe in that hand, like palm reading and all that stuff? Do you put any you know, put I, any dice in that? I. Yeah. Told me no. You know. <laughs> I don't know. You know. You see so many things like you know like remember Miss Cleo on TV. You oh know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of mercy. Yeah. 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 Called me now yeah. and then. Uh, but, I don't know. I. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but to get a, someone that's legit yeah. to someone that you know right. is just trying to make a buck, do I you, don't know. You, Randy, do you believe in it? Uh, you know what? I, I, I suppose it's possible. Yeah. You know, I, I've never really went somewhere and had it done. You know, I've right. had people say, ah, you know, they were kind of spooky how cl- close they were. Uh, you know, on yeah. certain things and. I don't know if it's a, you know, yeah, I don't know. I think there are people out there that are legit. Uh, right. I, I think yeah. there's legit people, but then I think, you know, there's a lot of people that got got the notion that they could use it to their advantage. Oh, of course. And, and oh. scam people scam for people. it. Yeah. And I, I guess I is, I'm a little skeptic about it just because of that. Right. You know? Yeah. How to find. And I, you know, it's like anything, you know, I guess. If you pay a lot of money for somebody, I think you're probably going to be getting right. the legit. I well, as long as it benefits, if it benefits yeah. someone, I I don't I don't think it's that it's a bad thing. Yeah, but all right. I think too many people get stuck in it though. It's kind of like a chiropractor in my mind. Yeah, <laughs> they keep having to go go back. Yeah, go yeah. Back, yeah. Go it seems back. like yeah. you know everybody goes, oh, you should go to a chiropractor, you know. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no yeah. I ain't doing it. No. And they're like, why not? I said. It's like getting a tattoo, you know. It's like, oh, once you've gone once and got one, now you gotta got now you gotta have yeah. twenty of them. You and know, and next thing yeah. you know, you're covered. You rely on it. Yeah, and they yeah. rely on it, and it seems like they're always wanting someone to fix something. Yeah, I'm not about that. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. That's why I ain't got no tattoos. That's why I don't go to a you chiropractor. Have, you don't have a tattoo? Four years of Marine Corps, no tattoos. I'll be down. Yeah, I could have had plenty. Yeah, I had buddies buy, wanting to buy them all the time, but I'm like, oh. flip through the little book, and I'd be like, yeah, get yourself a bigger one. <laughs> yeah, I've I've never got one either, and I've always really? you know just because I, I'm going, I don't know what, I can't make up my mind what I want to have on forever. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Like that same thing. The last thing, it's a God thing. God bless unanswered prayers. When I was in high school, it was a big joke because nobody knew what my nationality was, so I don't really fall into any stereotype. And so this rumor started that my buddy started that I was Hawaiian. <laughs> so, man, people, to this day, some people still think I'm Hawaiian. You know what I mean? In my yeah. senior yearbook, it's all this Hawaiian, a bunch of redneck kids trying to um, make <laughs> He's like, you race, know who I'm talking about. Ra- racial slurs about Hawaiians, but nobody hates Hawaiians, yeah, yeah. so it's super yeah, hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, uh, my idea was I was going to get the punchy, the Hawaiian tattoo on the surfboard for one time. And I thought at 18, that'd be badass. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't go through with that one because I've mean, covered that yeah. up. What do you do to uh, Hawaiian? Suck poi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Poi boy. Yeah. <laughs> if I need something in prison, I don't want my tattooed on my ass. So. Then he looks like the rock. He yeah. has them all over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Just to cover up that damn punchy. All right. Well, Randy, what we do now is we try and guess which one it is, and when we do that, we rock, paper, scissors. Now, how do you rock, paper, scissors, Randy? Three. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ready? All right. God damn it. Dang, that's twice in a yeah, row. Yeah, you're amazing at this. <laughs> that had been something eventually, so I thought you could say something. So, okay. <laughs> we got three great stories. The Rocking Chair, Fort Morgan, Thompson, Utah Gas Station, Springs. Oh, Thompson Springs, Utah Gas Station. Sorry, mm-hmm. Driscoll Hotel, Austin, Texas. Oh. So uh, here's what I think. I think the rocking chair is true, and I'm cheating because your sister brought up that you guys lived in a haunted house. So I'm going to go and see if that one's true. 
I'm going to say the Driscoll Hotel is true also, just by the way you told a little passion with that one. The reason I'm taking the, the Thompson, Utah gas station, it seems like the most the easiest one for you to make up. Like maybe that guy did freak you out, maybe you did leave, but I'm not thinking you saw him on the news slaughtering people after that. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Thompson, Utah. What do you got, Jerry? Uh, I like that. I like that. That's actually pretty good. You're lucky I go Man, first. You're, actually, you're, you're actually smarter than you look. That's only the 184th time I've done this. Come on. Let me look. I just say that because we're on your mm-hmm. podcast. <laughs> I say it about the podcast. So. Um, dead air, dead air. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, well, do you have one you think is true for sure? You've obviously done a good job, Randy, because I've never seen him stump like this I, before. I know. Ever. I've never I, seen I, him. You know, I was really intrigued into all of them. So, uh, yeah, I, and I was trying to pick out little things, you know. I've as, never seen Jerry speechless. And when people say it, I'm like, I saw it one time. Randy Weimer did it to him. It was yeah. like one of the three miracles before you become a saint. Thank God Rob ain't here. He'd be, yeah. We wouldn't be able to shut him up. Um, I'm going to go with the rocking chair for some reason. Really? Something about... I don't know. Is it fair to say you're stumped at this point? I am. I am. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there was something about the rocking chair. I can't put my finger on it. Um, exactly what it was. Or recall because. Like he didn't yeah. sleep in his truck overnight or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Something. Or maybe the guy stayed there and. Yeah. You know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, there's. I'm going to go rocking chair. Rocking chair. All right. Before you flip that over, I do want to say, hey, thank you to the Brush and Pouring for giving us this great place to have a podcast studio. They've been amazing and awesome about everything. 210 Clayton Street. If you haven't been here, what the hell are you waiting for? Come on down. They have amazing food. Have you eaten here yet, Randy? Yeah. Had the food? What did you think? It's good. We yeah. had wings one time. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You guys, yep, yeah, that's right. Uh, they have wings, pizza, ice cream, pasta. They have all kinds of great stuff. It's a Tuesday night. They're doing bingo here tonight. Also, the cool thing I think about this place is they have a great seating area, and in the corner you'll see a bunch of old school board games. Yeah. So you can bring the family out, play old board games if you want. You know, my mom just had her Ouija 70- board. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Summon the devil, that kind of crazy shit. Um, Mom had her 70th birthday here. They let it cater here. It was pretty cool. That's cool. And my friend brought their kids. I was telling you this last time. Mm-hmm. They were like, you know, 18 and 16 or something, 17. Well, anyway, they're playing Candyland. I'm like, you guys like that? And they're like, we've never seen this before. I'm like, how have you never seen Candyland before? But <laughs> to them, it was brand new. Like, did you see this discovery we had? I'm like, yeah, I discovered it in 1982. It was <laughs> the same, might have been the same board, you know? <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you so much. They've been so amazing and so generous with everything. So I can't thank them enough. All right. What do you got, Jerry? Hey, and if you guys see that little red button down there, Give us a click, a follow, a like. Um, it's a small click for you, but it's a huge click for us. Huge click for us, man, and we appreciate all the business. All right. All right. Having said that, you're taking the rocking chair. I am taking Thompson Springs, Utah Dude, gas station. Dude, if it's Driscoll again. Do we, do we, do we stab Randy? All <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. What you got, Randy? I'm getting ready to grab the mic. Thompson Springs. <laughs> <laughs> What's a lie? What's not true? Um. None of it ever happened. None of it's true. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, because it'd be weird for that poor guy if Randy Weimer thought you were creepy. You know what I mean? Like, there's something wrong with that dude. It's, you know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he talks to Rob all the that's time. Like, I, should have, I should have picked that up. That, that's like Thunder High calls him a creeper. You know, it's like, uh, I mean, if that's what yeah. he thinks, that's uh, yeah. better get to start changing yeah. clothes. So the rocking chair is true story, man. That is, yeah. Completely made it up. <laughs> <laughs> this one? Yeah. Yeah. Thompson yeah. Springs. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. That fucking son of a yeah, he fooled you. But uh, <laughs> you know what? Storyteller for sure, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. He is. Uh, yeah. How long did you live in that house for the rocking chair? Oh, uh, well, geez. When did, what year did we sell it? 79, 80? Oh, wow. 80, oh, wow. In the, eight, in the, to, to 80s, yeah. I don't know, yeah. But were you, how, how young were you when you moved in? Is that the house you grew we, up we, in? We, I was, yeah. Was, that's oh, a, that's yeah, crazy. I lived there, yeah. Three that, grew up. Yeah. That's we wild, there, man. Yeah. That's a true story. Uh-huh. Very cool. Driscoll Hotel, that's kind of chilling that that's a true yeah. story. I'm surprised that you didn't have more stories, you know. Just, I mean, you, and if you were, what, you said you were in your 20s yeah. when that, that happened? All about that house. Yeah. 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 
The house is evil. Yeah? It was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you had a lot of more oh, yeah. experiences. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, didn't your, your mom ha- hired an exorcist, didn't she? Oh, uh, well, a medium. Or a medium. Medium to, to come in and, yeah. Ask. Did it work? Uh, you know what? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> she came in, she's like, I got this. Yeah, this place is She's like, fucked. $500? <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm, uh, no, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Peace out. That's and crazy. I, I think it... And, my mom and my sister, you know, had stuff happen. My dad, I think, did too, but I don't think he ever, ever admitted to any of it. Really? Know? Yeah. Well, I mean, at one point in time, that's his house, and he's got to yeah. protect his children. Yeah. Right. Really, you know, it's just. Well, and you don't want to tell your kids, yeah. you know, right. be talking to your friends. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird shit going on in yeah. here, you know, and then the kids are like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks, Dad. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 By Appreciate the way, it. it might eat a little bit of your soul. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't worry. Worry. yeah. It's a long ways from your heart. <laughs> Rub some dirt on it. Before we go, Randy, I do want you to tell me a quick story. Uh, I think this is very fascinating, the story you tell about to your uh, your dad's cousin, the, yeah. mil- the World War II vet. H- Henry, yeah. Yeah. Henry Weimar. Yeah. You were telling me he did so... I'll let you tell more about it, but at one point in time, the U.S. government decided to pick one soldier per state. Yeah. It made a, every, a, a decorated soldier from every state, and down at Branson, they're, uh, they're, everyone's got their hand on the next guy. They're, and there's, oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. And it's a... I, I don't know if we got any pictures of that or not. I, I do got a picture of it, but it, it looks it's exactly like him. They did a bronze statue, you know, right. exactly like him. Yeah. It was kind of wild hmm. in telling that story because Sean Kelly, that was his grandfather, he told that story. <coughs> yeah. He was like episode number five. It was early on. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how he dressed the nines and he always, you know, uh. he's always dressed up and everything about him. And then one day you were talking about you, your family members, and I was like, I think you're related to Sean, which that sucks for you. But, just, <laughs> but uh, kidding, Sean, I love you. But I think that's really cool, man, that they, they picked one soldier per, per state, and yeah. you're, you're related to the one that got picked from Colorado. That's yeah. That's something. You know, right, pretty pretty wild. So, anyway, Randy, man, uh, didn't disappoint, brother. <laughs> that was awesome. I, and, thank you. And was it that bad? No, no, it really wasn't that bad. So, yeah, once you get used to it, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah, everybody, it, is, it is fun. Yeah, everybody gets a little nervous when they first do it, and then they. I they well, I thought he would have came on, especially since he already co-hosted. Yeah. yeah. I thought I thought oh for sure he'll yeah. he'll do this like right away. Yeah. Because like I always say, when I started co-hosting. I was more nervous about this. Were you really? Yeah, I was more nervous about co-hosting <laughs> than doing yeah. that. Yeah, and just because I'm like, well, you know, how do I, you know? But yeah, yeah like you said, I'm used to talking. All yeah, the time we, we figured. So, it out. so it was pretty easy. Yeah, it actually. Yeah. We figured it out. That's been the biggest difficult. Uh, Crazy stories, yeah. Oh yeah, and it's and being over the road trucker. I mean, I think helps to. Yeah. You see a lot of crazy shit, right? Yeah. Especially do it. Yeah. I mean, so is the Thompson Springs gas station really there yeah it is yeah oh, oh. what is that oh it's very cool it's, a, it's this, the statue it's one of the guys oh wow if you can send that to me i'll put it here on the uh you yeah. guys can check it out that's very very cool man Our and son went to visit there this oh really summer, this summer. Yeah. And they, oh wow and they're all labeled they are all the soldiers yep. very yeah. cool and it says henry weimer and i had to always got a kick out henry was a hard-working guy you yeah. know i mean henry and he raised a bunch of kids and we always learned from the time that if don't startle him because he'll sure. take your head off, you know. But anyways, after they kind of contacted him to maybe do this, he didn't want to have nothing to do with it. Them guys, when they came back, it was done. That's that was a lifetime ago. That you know, right? And uh, and these this whoever contacted him about that kind of kept pressing him and everything, you know. Yeah. So he started kind of reliving it well one day i'm i'm in the uh queens you know and and henry's in there so i sat down and we're having a cold beer you know hot freaking day and it, i said god damn it's hot out you know and he goes yeah he goes you know he goes we are out we're in uh north africa and he says it was hot he says miserable hot and now uh, he said and then we got shipped off into Anzio, you know, into Italy, and then he says, I'm with Patton's Third Army, you know, and then next thing I know, he says, we're smack dab in the frickin' middle of the Battle of the Bulge, you know. That's nuts. And, uh, and we're sitting there drinking a beer, and, then, you know, and he never, ever 
mm-hmm. really brought up anything, you know. Right. And then one day he kind of got a grin on his face. He goes, you know what's the sweetest sound in the world? And I says, no, what's that? And he goes, fucking German Tiger tank running out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, we have a dead ring now. <laughs> Sean was telling me a story about him when he was in the war, how they had a German uh, uniform. And at night he would put it on, sneak across lines. He spoke German, yeah. He spoke German. And he, uh, from what Sean was telling me, that it was risky because Germans, like any other language, it's got dialects to it like yeah accents almost right Mm -hmm. and luckily it was around the place he grew up i guess right and i mean how ballsy is that because they catch you yeah oh yeah you're not around for the sequel you know what i mean right so that's uh that's just a cool story about it that is yeah Yeah. it it, it was fun to watch sean todd he got a little emotional that was his grandpa he loved Mm -hmm. you know but it was it was I think that's the coolest stories, you know. Yeah, so that is. But anyway, Randy, I want to thank you so much for coming on. It's been about yes, some you. time, bro. You're one of the person I thought of when I started this podcast. I'm like, oh, Weimer, man, you tell stories all day, you know. So, and it and took him this long to yeah, do it. Yeah, well, yeah, better late than never, bro. Better late than never. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, save I'm, the best for last. Save the best for close to the last. So <laughs> anyway, I'm Moose Lunster. I'm Jerry Cage. Hey, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.